Hello there and welcome back to Forza Horizon 4 where we are straight into some dirt racing. Where we are knocking off some daily challenges and working towards our weekly challenge. Without the festival playlist series holding everything together, it's a little bit more ad hoc, but there are still some seasonal championships available. And the weekly challenge still gives you a bunch of Forza Fond points, as do daily challenges, and with those you can buy special cars that come up each week, and the backstage passes to be able to trade in for more of the limited cars that have been available. Eventually you're going to catch them all. Um, this is essentially car Pokemon after all. But you can get a lot of fun out of this game until you do. As one of the parts of this weekly challenge where we had to own and drive a Mitsubishi VI 6 if you speak Latin. Interestingly it's just part of the Mitsubishi DLC that they added on. Uh, it turns out there was no Mitsubishi or very few Mitsubishi cars included in the game on release for some reason. Weird licensing issues probably. I'm sure it's business stuff that I don't fully want to understand. But they did at least add them as a separate DLC. You don't even need to buy them. Once you install the DLC, they're just free. At least for the first one. This car is a B rating, but I've tuned it up to be an A. Hitting it right on the 799 mark with Rally Springs and some performance updates. Which, as I've mentioned before, is one of my favourite classes of cars to race. So that was a happy accident. <laughs> the other happy accident is that the requirement for this was to win five dirt races. And I've got plenty to do. So as you can see, I've only got dirt races showing, and even though we've unlocked and completed the gauntlet, which is kind of the capstone on all of the dirt racing series there's still quite a few that have the new symbol on them that means i've never raced them before if i have it's just been part of a particular event and it hasn't counted as progression most of the others they'll say exhibition completed instead so this seemed like the perfect excuse to knock some of those new ones out and work our way through level up our dirt racing even further I'm not even sure if there's a cap. I think it might be level 20 or something in each racing series. And I'm only like level 12, so it's quite a little way to go. Most importantly, this is just, yeah, one of the funnest game modes. Yes, we end up racing on the road a lot more than we would like for supposed dirt racing series. The circuit races tend to give you a lot more off-road, but the trails necessarily have to link between dirt roads on the tarmac, which is fine. <laughs> so I did try playing rally games before because I do like dirt racing, but the rally games are just far too prescriptive. Like the tracks are very rigid and you're expected to follow the your navigation are much more simulator heavy whereas this is just fun <laughs> remember to break before the crest of that hill so we don't just slam into the wall and now through the mud kicker park uh, we've definitely raced this track before but it seems that if you race it as part of one of the seasonal championships it doesn't count as you having done it as part of the career progression like the actual exhibition so to speak i guess technically you can race it in each different category of car too for a real completionist perspective well we managed to avoid bottoming out on any of those jumps and rolling head over heels so i'll take that as a win <laughs> We'll see if we manage to do the same for our next race, which will be the circuit track, 
around the 4x4 park. Because that too is apparently new to us. Now this one I remember vividly as having done previously. I don't think it was on a recording. But it was part of a championship, either a, like a Horizon Open or maybe even the Trial. Because I know I was racing with and against other players. And I was doing really well. I was in fact winning. But every time I came up to complete a lap, or when I got to the end of the trail races, someone else was in the top spot. It's like, but no one was in front of me. Yes, yeah, someone was blatantly cheating. I don't know quite what they were doing, but when it came to the circuit race, their car just kept being ghosted and just rolling backwards away from the start finish line. But with every checkpoint, they would just jump up to the top spot somehow. Not quite sure how that works. Some sort of weird bot play going on. I was mildly peeved, but ultimately it doesn't really affect what I'm doing. Yeah, I didn't get the full XP for coming first that I should have, but eh, whatever. If someone has to resort to cheating at a game to feel better about themselves, you know. <laughs> They need help, and reporting them isn't really going to be what gives it to them. It's also a, such a faff to go through to actually report someone. I just couldn't be bothered. Final lap. Splash. Those... Crests are really not made for this sort of car, but thankfully we managed to avoid crashing. Get a nice drift around the last of the dirt bins and onto the tarmac. And across the line and then we'll go hunting for another race. Three down and two to go. Got the woodland scramble up now. We could cap this off by doing the gauntlet again, but uh, that seems excessive. <laughs> we also don't know what the final four from four for the weekly challenge is going to be. That was a terrible corner. just made it inside that flag you can cut the corner an awful lot down this hill and it does let you catch up to the AI very quickly and then you can lean on them through the corners too <laughs> it's just one of the advantages with uh, not being out in front is you get to navigate the corners with just a little help from your friends oh, I was really hoping that that guy would stay with me so I could lean against him through the bend Use that as exhibit A. Never mind. Now we have to make the lines for ourselves and, and race properly. Can we do this corner a bit better? Eh. Slight improvement. Still not ideal. We don't need to cut the corner quite so much down here this time. You do just slide around an awful lot down that stretch because of how muddy it is. It does make it tricky to stop for that corner. You just got to remember to break with the plenty of time. Once you're well enough ahead, it doesn't matter if you over break a little bit. If you're getting cleanly through the corners, it's much better than making a mistake and smacking into the wall. This one up here is the one that really matters. So we go wide, break, turn, uh, still understeered. You'd think I'd be able to break 
plenty of time given I'm going uphill, but I don't know, something about that corner just always end up understeering wildly. What you really want to make sure you do with these dirt races sometimes is uh, line up a car that has mastery points that give you bonus uh, drift skills. Because you will be drifting a lot in a dirt race. Whether you want to or not. <laughs> but it'd be, it can be a good way to rack up some skill points. Final race for the weekly challenge now. Another scramble event. Some really nice tight corner sections up first here. Bit of a water trap there. Thankfully we do have a decent ride height. Get past this Audi. Thank you. Past the Subaru, that's a classic. Lean through the corners there. There we go. We just we play very uh, intimately <laughs> through the first lap. Get ahead, and then we can take it easy on the next two. Got a pretty good tuning setup in this car. I just threw it together and uh, it's worked out quite well so I might actually share the tune it's probably not like the best performance that you can get or anything like that but it's a pretty good all round it feels like it's handling pretty well we've got some decent acceleration early on in the race top speed doesn't seem too slow like they're not catching up to us super fast on the straight sections but when you're doing dirt racing, you tend not to have long straights anyway. So it doesn't matter if your top speed is not the best. Because you're always going to make up for it through corners like this. Now I've got to negotiate them cleanly without having other cars to lean on. <laughs> Just to prove that we can actually drive. Little dab on the brakes after that bridge there. It's a steeper corner than you might think. Just avoid going off into the field. And then this one here, always easy to be caught out. But if you just brake plenty heavily before the corner, got plenty of buffer. So they don't really get a chance to catch up before we're through it. And it always is a bit of a psychological thing as well, where it feels like they're catching up really quickly when you break before a corner like that. It's like, oh, they're right there. Yeah, but they also have to break and navigate through the corner as well. So <laughs> you actually keep parity a lot of the time. Racking up those ultimate clean racing skills yet again. And once again, getting a bit disappointed that they don't uh, cascade. <laughs> you can never really link anything on to an ultimate clean racing skill. Sometimes you get a speed skill. But if you're racing cleanly, you're generally not getting drift or wreckage or anything like that. So how am I supposed to keep that going? Really needs to tick up more frequently. A little bit wide on the runoff there, but hey, we're all-wheel drive, we've got rally tyres, doesn't really slow us down much. And that will be 5 from 5. So here you can see the new Forzathon view, it's not really new, uh, this was always there when you went into the subsection that had the weekly challenges and the daily challenges, uh, even when the playlist was active, but this is pretty much all you get now. Uh, but you get the daily challenge run through, unfortunately you can't scroll through it, but you can see that we've completed the three that were active, because two of them involve passing things, and we were just doing a lot of racing, and drafting as well. But what we are left doing now is chapter four of Challenge of Our Rival, and it's taking our Lancer out for a ten mile drive 
I just did five races, and apparently that wasn't enough. I think we know what we're gonna do next. <laughs> That's right, we're back doing the gauntlet again. I mean, it's a lot longer than it needs to be. We only need to do 10 miles, which is 16 kilometers. Uh, the gauntlet is about 25 kilometers, so we'll get our weekly challenge completion just over halfway through the race. But that's fine. <laughs> it's also a good way to just earn a little bit of extra credits and influence. I really should have uh, changed the difficulty settings actually because I've been winning fairly easily. I could have turned off ABS and all of my aids and gotten a lot more credit bonus. But that's fine. We'll just take the easy road. doesn't really boost it a hell of a lot it's like takes up to 60% bonus instead of 40% bonus it's nice but it's not that great we are still saving up because there are some player houses that we don't yet own specifically we don't own Edinburgh Castle yet and that costs 15 million credits so we're a little ways to go before we can have all of the houses in the game. This section is probably looking very familiar. We were just doing this uh, a couple of races ago. The gauntlet seems to borrow very heavily to start with on just one of the other trail events. I really wish they diversified it a little bit more. There's a lot more dirt road areas rather than going through this whole annoying jump section. There is more to this 4x4 park that doesn't really get explored in any actual race in the game. There's the playground, PvP events, but they're not very fun anyway and have nothing to do with the actual road layout. You're just going all over the place with those. Like the fact that even the scramble of the Mud Kickers 4x4 route only kind of goes through half of the park. It doesn't do a lap around it or anything. It's a little bit of a waste. I was meaning to throw together my own race that was kind of more like the Goliath version of a gauntlet, so it was more like a dirt lap race. I don't really care about making it into a lap necessarily. Just that it would cover off a lot more of the dirt sections, like going over the mountains in the north, for example, that the gauntlet does not. We stop short of actually going over the mountains, and we just run along the road, along the river, to the south of them, which just feels like a waste. Someone else has actually put together a Goliath-style dirt race. But as you can imagine, it's a lot longer than just the 10 miles that I needed to do here, so now's not quite the right time. I think that's probably an episode in its own. <laughs> I mean, Retro Rally is a good class for doing dirt races. But for a really long race like that, I wonder whether Rally Monster, much as I'm not a huge fan of the category, Mainly just because they keep making events that are rally monster that you have to do cross country tracks and they don't really work very well. But otherwise, in a dirt setting, that could be fun. Otherwise you can take a step back and instead of retro rally you can do classic rally. And that you'd probably be doing as like a B ray or something. Which would take a lot longer to complete. And would probably be like a 20 odd minute episode just by itself. What would be quite fun actually is putting together a race map that linked together practically every single off-road section in the game. You only have 250 checkpoints to work with though, so it might get a little bit loose. <laughs> I 
I guess it doesn't matter because you still drive the roads and if there's a few places where you can technically skip checkpoints because there's a long like along here for example we've got this checkpoint in the middle oh there we go challenge of our rival complete that's our 10 miles done along this stretch of road there's about four checkpoints before the next corner it's kind of excessive because there's not really any other more direct path that you can take between those two points like this one here what's the point of that checkpoint that we just went through so now we're approaching the lake around Derwent Water. Where it's another disappointing thing about the gauntlet that we come in from the east towards the lake. There's a really nice lakeside dirt track on the western side of the lake that we don't get to go on. I'm not sure if there's any dirt race that actually goes along there at all. Instead we're just on the roads going up here we go past the Mortimer Gardens area not through it it's right there so much fun to be had through the chickens anyone for nuggets they would definitely be tenders after being pulverized by a Mitsubishi. <laughs> Through the final forest section. And we do get to go along the lakeside on this side of the Derwent water at least. It's something. <laughs> It's not as nice as the other road though, that's the thing. This one has a lot more water traps and rocks. It's almost more of a cross-country section. Certainly quite a cruel thing to put right at the end. Yes, there's all those rocks just on the side back there. It's the stupidest place to put a bunch of stones. It's really annoying. You've definitely got to be on your toes. After quite a long race. 10 minutes in. This is the technical section. <laughs> well, we've done our 10 miles and then some. And we're well ahead, so we'll get some good rewards. How much do we get? 56,000 credits, not bad. And about 17,000 influence. That's a couple of levels. And that's our weekly challenges done. We do still have some seasonal championships that have been generated. Uh, there doesn't seem to be an easy way of us to tell what rewards we would get from doing them. So you just kind of have to jump in there and do it. I don't think there's any reward that's worth bothering with the trial though, or the playground games. But there are still PR challenges and completing each one of those usually gives you a super wheel spin which is a chance to get like three good prizes or usually three bits of cash and there's some the showcase remixes again all in all still plenty to do but that will do it for this week thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time